What up, family? It's your boy, Gerald. 9 December 2015. We've linked twice. You're going to be on the back side of this month. Already starting to embrace a new season, a new year. 2016. This is going to be that year where there's going to be a lot of epiphanies, a lot of revelations, and a lot of clarity. It's going to be revealed to you. It's going to be revealed to you because it was written for your legacy. It's part of your destiny. And no matter how hard you try to shift, mold, or create, it is going to come to pass with or without your consent. So it's very important that you be prepared for what's to come because if you do not, you will fall into that proverbial placement that so many have before you have felt. What I'm talking about is that feeling of having your feet pulled from under you, things unbeknownst to you being placed in front of you. See, these are the things that must come to pass. These are the things yet unlearned. These are the things required because it has your name attached to it. So how's everybody doing, y'all? We're halfway through our week. I know that I'm normally posting on the weekends, but as you already know, when my spirit is called, I obey and I covey because I know it comes from him. And you know what? When you think about it, you're worth it. Always have been, always will be. But we are required to do the work. That's why, more importantly, in this time, in this moment, we must do our own work. We must ensure that the seeds that are connected to our essence, our spirit, are, are cultivated on ground that is fertile, that are founded by your faith because see these are the makings of you so why would you accept for anything less than so you see what's being put out there you see what's felt the climate socially is starting to become stagnant people are not taking responsibility for what falls from their lips, but yet want understanding on how it's embraced. You can't be in two places at one time. So it's very important that what you do and what you say represents you to the fullest. I ain't got to tell you that because I know the people that are found on my channel the people that may have found this video know what's important to them. You just want to be emotionally safe. You're tired of towing the rope that ain't yours. You're tired of seeing the BS that is being placed before you for acceptance. That's not your walk. Because it does not define your worth. So now, the blinders have come off, and it is bright. This is your truth. This is your clarity. This is the foundations that are found inside you. So, you're going to have the courage to go within yourself now? Because I know that that emotional backpack is heavy. I've conveyed to many to stop running from yourself. 
Because as long as you run from yourself, you'll never find you. You'll only find the things that you never needed. These are known as our distractions, our lessons, our wisdom, and our insights. Because for every breakdown, there is eventually your breakthrough. See, this is your truth. So if this is your truth, why won't you look at it? What are you afraid of? Because as long as you look over there, you ain't going to find what you need. As long as you go over here, it will always hold you back. So why won't you look at your truth? See, more and more as the days go by, positions of arrogance, ego, spite, try to anchor themselves in what we know is our day-to-day. -day. See, I've always said this from day one. No one can love you but you. So why are you afraid to do so? What you got what got you so shook that you feel that you've got to take that walk into the darkness thinking that there will be light on the other side? So I'm asking you again. How much and how heavy does that emotional backpack that you carry. Some of y'all might know it as your cross. How heavy does it got to get for, before you finally submit? Don't you see that everything that you're seeing is playing out because of the things that you've attracted into your life? It attracted to your life because it was a commonality first. But before it could become a commonality, there must have been a like-minded process. I'm saying this out of awareness. I'm saying this out of love. If you're waking up this morning and you're saying, I'm tired, if you're tired of picking up that plate that has, says despair on it, maybe it's time that you finally acknowledge that was never where you were supposed to be. If there's no growth out of it, why are you there? So that goes back to what I said time and time again. More importantly, ever so much in this day and age, our relationships have more weight than what we have materially. But those are the most things that are scrutinized as well as redefined. Because your bonds should be unbreakable. I said that before. Because I know somebody needs to hear this. You keep trying to convince them that you got it going on, but inside you broke it. You try to keep your chin up, but inside you're in pain. Don't you know that every day that you continue to walk that path to try to fool them, you're fooling yourself? You're fooling yourself because that's not where you should have been before. But you know what? You are so loved. Oh, yes, you are. I know you're probably saying, well, if people love me, Jerry, why are people keep walking out of my life? I keep trying to convey this to you as well. See, everybody is shown mercy in the intended time. I know this needs to go out to somebody. you saying, if I could turn back the hands of time, I would say and do what I needed to do to heal that bond. This might be with your family member. It might be a, I got a feeling somebody is in different and desperate need to heal their bond with their siblings. Maybe your brother, your sister, or something. For some reason, you have not spoken 
and it was based off of pride. Nobody wanted to admit that they were wrong, and they took it up to the next level. And now you got a health issue going on, or they got a health issue, and you want to be by their side, but because of not having the humility to apologize, you're divided, and you're missing out. Just know they need you just as much as you need them. Because together, you're stronger. You're connected by blood and bone. That's why the title family exists. But <coughs> because the devil is a liar, the devil employs the Jezebel spirit. And he makes sure that there is no peace in that house. No peace in that family structure. You might be one, you may have been scratching your head the whole time. You said, well, you know what? I never was at peace when I was growing up. All I saw was fighting and arguing and backbiting and, and cheating and all this. And I made it through. But I don't want to go back there. But I'm in a catch-22 situation because unconditionally, that's my family. Well, let me tell you something. The road back starts within you. Maybe right now you're not supposed to be there. Maybe this is the moment in your life that you're going to finally allow yourself to be vulnerable. Have that conversation with him. He's been waiting on you from your first tear that fell. He's been waiting on you. It's not his responsibility to get you right. It's your responsibility to claim it. That's just like turning on the hot and cold speaker at the same time, expecting one or the other to perform or get a, you know, you can't be, you can't have it both ways. You got to choose. But when you decide to choose for yourself, there will be change. Oh, yeah, there'll be change. Because what's going to happen is those people that never had your best interest, slowly but surely the division, the spiritual division will take place. And you'll see it. It's going to happen. It happens because those people never had God in their life. This may be one of those situations where it may be a family member. And the whole time they only wanted to see you in a little box because they didn't have the courage to claim themselves too. But have faith. Have faith. Because what you may not realize is there may have been placed a spiritual stronghold before you were born. And the price was your demise. But as long as you put God first, all things that is not of his will shall fall, shall be bound up, and shall be placed before the Holy Spirit. So when are you going to do the work? Are you setting your watch? on what your friends say or what your companions doing they want to put you in a certain image because that's the image they got about you that may be how the bonds were forged it may have been a sexual or an interlude it may be through an addiction it may be not of love and it seems like it's titillating in the beginning but every time you're around them there's always a loss that comes after that's your son can't you see it as long as you have those people in your life you'll never get ahead so i know you're saying well Gerald, i would be less than if i walk away they've done so much for me so for me to claim myself and walk away and do it on my own i will be looked at as i'm betraying them when you decide to ground your feet 
you come to understand that the things that were done were nothing but lures to distract you from you. Because if it wasn't given by love, genuinely, there was always a price. The price was you. The price was your self-worth. The price was your spirit. I know I'm talking to somebody, and this is how you know. If it wasn't genuinely done, guess what? They always throw it in your face. So you know love ain't in that. Because if there was love, it would be given unconditionally. But see, we have this covert, narcissistic mindset that, you know, everything's about me. And if it don't fall my way, like they're living... Like they living on the on the screen like the Game of Thrones. Like I'm that person sitting on the throne. There's only one person sitting on that throne, and that's God. Only the fool thinks that. And then you have the nerve to be mad because your life is in a holding pattern. Don't you realize? I said that two years ago. When you decide to put your ego and pride before your spirit, your life will do this, like a plane looking for a landing strip. And you will keep in that cycle. And But the ironic part is everybody that had that same environment is doing that with you. But here's the kicker. The moment that you decide to see your value, to see your worth, and try to break away, no, they keep you up in there. They got to keep that flow going, and that flow is not blessed. I got this feeling like that Capital One commercial. He said, what's in your wallet? No, nah, you need to worry about what's in your spirit because you might be laying next to a demon, and they don't want you to come into your own. So they do this. They pacify. You know, just like a baby. You know when a baby cries, you go give it something so it can be quiet. It can be still. Same thing. Same thing. I don't want you to think. I want you to perform the way I asked you to. So, oh, I got to go out there and get you that? Sure. Because the more I do that, that buys me more time to do more havoc in your life. Birds of a feather flock together. And guess what? It ain't blessed. Look at where you are now compared to where you were beginning of the year. What has changed? The faces? How about your money situation? If it's still the same but the people change, but the drum is still there, it's connected to you. There's still work you have yet to take on. And that could be based off of fear. That could be based off of influence. Come on, think about it. They think, society, socially, think that, especially for our community, that as long as I put a label in front of it, I got someone's attention span. Even to the point, they said, well, you know what? Because I know your self-esteem is so low, I'm going to put a price that's without reach just to see if you try to reach it. And how many queens did you do it? You pay for you pay for a pair of shoes that you only probably wear maybe once or twice? The value of a mortgage. But nowhere in that was your name. Isn't that what sheep do? Follow the shepherd, even if it's to slaughter. So now, more importantly, you're starting to see these. You're starting to see these advertisements. Remember how they used to advertise about first it was sleeping issues. Then it went from breathing issues. Now they're talking about blood issues. They're talking about it like it's the common cold. Nah, that's death. They want you to be so conditioned so if it happens to you, you cool with it. Little do they not tell you that HIV has always been there and people are dropping like flies. I ain't got to tell you that, queen. 
Look between your legs. Why you think your skin is turning a different way? Because what you're doing is you're being spiritually attacked. You got people in your playground that shouldn't have never been there. And you look at them, and they look at you like, what? They're giving you what you asked for, not what you needed. So now, all of a sudden, people are starting to stand up. How dare that you say that about me? What is the truth? For those people that are starting to awaken and see their worth, go with grace. Go with humility. Now is the moment that you're going to start to learn what the word patience is all about. Because you already know what impulse can do. You already know what a sound mind cannot. So now, how many tears do you have to have to allow fall before you finally lift your head? See, I understand that there's some of you right now that have been living with a burden. Oh, you're your hell. Some of y'all been living with a burden that's, that pretty much reminds me of the scenario. Okay, y'all remember that movie, Beloved, Oprah Winfrey? Mm -hmm. If y'all have never seen the movie, I highly recommend it. Go up here and watch it. I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix or but look at it. From beginning to end, there is a spiritual message in there if you're willing to look at it, be open to it. Because our movies, every movie is metaphoric, but you got to know where to look and listen. So, bag lady, when you're going to go into that bag and look inside those wolves, Mm -hmm. So beautiful, but so broken. My kings, I know your heart aches for the one, but you can't have the one if you ain't prepared for the one. The one is you. Why do you think metaphorically they say, he or she is my better half? Because they're your mirror. So, if you're running around to and fro, I ain't got to tell you this. Look at your speedometer. Look at your bank account. If it don't reflect growth, then where's the liability? The liability falls when you decide to keep turning a blind eye to the things you need to focus on. I know somebody's saying, well, Gerald, you know, I was looking for another job. My king. Before a king becomes a king, he has to start at the lower level. Some are birthed into it, but guess what? When they don't know who they are, they fall quick. Just look at our celebrities. Just look at all the people who thought they just I got their head up, nose up, thought they were better than. They all fall. They're going to continue to fall. Like a, like a bunch of ants going up the side of a building. Eventually they get so high and they all fall down. Why? Because they was never supposed to bend there. But something lured them away. Something. That's not your walk. It's time for you to claim your life back. So I know somebody saying, well, girl, I got desires and I've got my flaws. See, you know, don't you, don't you, don't you love it when somebody quick to try to be passive aggressive and they say, well, you know what? I got flaws. Yeah, you know, I'm not perfect, but they don't do nothing about it to empower them. You know what you're seeing? A person that does not want to see their worth or change. Better yet, they project it on you when they see you trying to stand up and do something for your life. Oh, no. Mm -mm. I'm broken. So you think I want to let you just leave? Oh, no. And guess what? That's when them hooks come out and they try to 
keep you in place. No, you can't go nowhere. Mm -mm. I know I'm talking to somebody, somebody, a terrorist in their own home, but here's the kicker about it. That ain't even your home. You just cohabitating there. You thinking, well, you know what? As long as I stir the pot and as long as I give them the dessert, I've earned it. No, you didn't. There's no difference than someone leasing a car. But, but guess what? Even when a lease contract's up because the mileage is up, you always trade that in. You only got one body. You only have one spirit. I'm telling y'all what you already know. So why won't you love yourself? Why? That man will never complete you. He never had the power to. So you think that's an even trade? You play the servant? You play the sex slave? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the new thing. He's like, well, you know what? As long as I swing on the chandelier, then I'll keep him quiet. Guess what? He know how he got you. And deep down inside, he don't respect you. You do understand, kings and queens, that there are people out there that will sleep with you and hate you. There are people that will play this game. They say, well, you know what? Because I invested in you so long with my time, my resources, I'm going to make sure that I get my trade off. Those people are very narcissistic. They're dangerous, too, because the moment that you decide to speak your truth, oh, this, that mask comes off. These, these are the same people that turn around and say, I want structure and control, but they don't live it. They are the epitome of a walking contradiction. I say this out of love and out of awareness because I keep trying to tell you the devil is real. Don't you understand before your breakthrough comes, you're going to be thrown to the wolves. You may have seen this in your own family. You're like, how could you do this to me? I know I'm talking to somebody. The people that should protect you and be the inspiration of your development are the same people sticking those knives in your back. You know why? It's because all they're doing is repeating the cycle because someone did that to them. In other words, those who have been abused without intervention become the abuser. Mm -hmm. until God gets tired and then he'll sit you down I ain't got to tell you there's that some person right now you're like remember that moment you felt it in your spirit but you still did what you wanted to do and then on the 13th hour you, when you thought something was going to go down because your back was to the wall God stepped in and divided you from that situation he spared you he spared you from that pain. But the devil left that memory in the back of your mind. You think? You, like, for example, is a. Y'all remember the movie Final Destination? It talked about death and cheating death, right? Well, let's metaphorically change it a little bit. Let's talk about that devil. See, the devil's work is never done, y'all. And sometimes the devil will take and set up a scenario that is so bleak so that you will act a certain way only to lead you to your demise. I know I'm talking to somebody. You didn't turn around and thought you were smart. And you said, well, you know what? I'm going to go and lateral off like this. And that's going to put me in better footing overall, trying to outthink everybody, thinking like people don't know, only to realize and wake up, you in hell now. You in suffrage now. You in agony now. And the sad thing about it, your shackles is your pride and your ego because you won't allow yourself 
to admit you were wrong. Admit that you made a mistake. I ain't got to tell you, y'all. I mean, y'all know somebody like that. They could be bold-faced, will bold-facedly lie to you before they will come out their mouth and say, you know what? I'm, tru I'm truly sorry for what I did. Because they were students of someone that they did that did that to them. In other words, instead of embracing your breakthroughs and your wisdom of the experience, they hold on to the deception. And like, ah. You know, they'll have that mindset of, you know what, before you get me, I'll get you. Before you say this, I'm gonna say that. And all they're doing is deflecting, but what they don't realize what they're doing is delaying what is rightfully theirs. You got to remember, y'all, that old man sitting on that park bench, that homeless guy didn't get there overnight. There were signs that said, hey, this ain't the way. He may have had divine influence by strangers coming and saying things at the, the appropriate time that only he would understand what was going on, but he did not hear it. I got this feeling right now. Someone wants, you want motherhood so bad. You want to embrace it so bad. And you pretty much have put yourself on a silver platter to this person. You're saying to yourself, that's the one piece missing. And if I had a child, I would be complete. Let me tell you something. That person, that environment, and those, everything that's connected to that environment is not blessed, and you will not have a child with that person. You won't. You may try, try, and try, and you will not conceive. I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm saying this because this, this is what's coming out of my spirit to somebody. I know this relates to somebody. And you got this mindset, if I have this, if I had a child, I have it all. I'm set. I don't need nothing else. But the problem is that relationship is not blessed because how it came about. It was built off of a lie or an agenda. It was some covert, there was some covert deception. Something how y'all came about was not pure. So God is not going to let you have that. And it's not to punish you. It's to protect you from the person that is going to be that one. He ain't the one. Don't let his status, and really that ain't status. It really isn't because the person that is going to be in your life is going to make look make that look like make him look like what you're going to be scratching. Well, what was I? You're going to be scratching your head. You're going to be you're going to be crying tears of joy because you're going to know that that was God's gift to you the moment you decide to connect back with yourself. You know, I always say one of my favorite poems is by Robert Frost, The Road Less Taken. That road is the road to you. So you got to ask yourself, you got to look that person in the mirror, that beautiful person, you, my king, my queen, you, there's only one you. And tell yourself you love you. If you don't have the courage to tell yourself you love yourself, why do you think your relationships fail? Well, they happen for two reasons. They have to fail to teach you what you need. But it also has to happen to fortify the one that's going to come into your life. 
They're going to continue to fail and fail and fail. I got this feeling somebody, a female, you, it's a queen, she's saying her, in her heart, she's like, well, that's why, you know, I keep it moving. On to the next one. The guys do it all the time. But deep down your side, deep side, deep down inside yourself, you are disgusted. You disgusted because you can get them, but all they want to do is treat your body like a glove box. They all up in you, doing things to you. Ain't not a and not a stitch of love is there. There's so. You've actually said to yourself, why won't you make love to me? All you do is, mm. And they look at you and say, know why they don't make love to you? Because they don't love themselves. They don't love themselves because they were never shown love in their development. They're going off of what was told by their upbringing. I ain't got to tell you, just look at their circle. Look at the people they connected with. You over there scratching your head like, you know what? I don't want them in my family tree. You see this. You already see it. But you keep on letting them thieves upside inside your temple. Why you think you're losing? Why, why you think you got them bumps? I know I'm talking to you, somebody. You let him slap you around. You let him bruise you up. You got to wear long sleeves because you know if it ever came out, they'd be mopping him up and down the street. And you have the audacity to say, well, I like it that way. No, you don't. You're searching for love. You searching for love in all the wrong places. But you know what is in those places? Them demons. Because they work for the devil. And you thought you would have learned the last time you got in that man call. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody. You go to the club and don't even know the guy middle name, but you're getting it in in the parking lot. And you think that he going to respect you? You can't respect something unless you respect yourself first. And that's not your walk. If I'm pissing you off, good. Because you got a whole lot of people that love you that don't want to watch you die. I know I'm talking to somebody. So what you running from, bag lady? Bag man? Stop, my king, stop telling anybody that's willing to, willing to listen about how well you were in sports when you were in school, when you were in high school. You you in your 40s. If that was supposed to be your destiny, why you ain't in it now? If it was your calling, why aren't you coaching then since you can't play? I know that I need to go out to somebody since you so all in love with the game. Why aren't you a coach? Why aren't you volunteer? Oh, I know, because there ain't no monetary gain in it. So guess what? Anything that is not given from the heart purely is not blessed. And that is why your life is where it is. Until you decide to change what's inside, you will not be able to change your direction. And if you cannot change your direction, how can you say that you are alive? Stop doing a disservice to yourself, y'all. It's bad enough that you're choosing not to claim your life back. But just remember this. You got a whole lot of people outside your door that don't want to see you succeed because of what you look like. But more importantly, you got you to select few inside your family 
that are plotting for your demise. God is praying for you. You know I am. I see your worth. And for that, for that, for that, it helps me discern mine. Queen. You're not going to find, look, it doesn't matter if you slept with 200 dudes. Not one of them has your heart. The man that's going to have your heart is a spiritual man. He's being prepared. Will you receive him? Be blessed.